The M2 MacBook Air is Apple's latest MacBook Air redesign. And now, well, it's a year old. A lot can change within a single year. So let's talk about this laptop and whether you should consider it or not. Let's get started. The M2 2022 MacBook Air is Apple's cheapest laptop with their M2 chips. Despite that, it does pack some pretty nice features. But the most standout feature on basically any MacBook Air is how light that they are. For the last year, this thing has been tossed around, used everywhere, and as much as I'd hate to admit it, even eaten around too. Not often, but, but yeah. It's been an absolute workhorse. It's thin, light, and every time I begin to use my 14-inch MacBook Pro again, I really miss how light the M2 13-inch Air is. It really feels like a big tablet instead of a laptop in your hand, and I really, really like that. Using it every day spoils you on how light it really is compared to the other MacBooks, to the point that I even sometimes forget that I packed the laptop in my backpack. But like I mentioned in the last video, the finish around the ports are slowly chipping away to reveal a more bare silver look. Basically, all the little accidental nicks and scratches on the body will show up over time. So if you're not delicate with it, the midnight finish will start to show signs of wear. And this laptop is still a massive fingerprint magnet. Let me show you what I mean. I've wiped it down clean here, and if I just scrape my hand across it, you'll see the streaks appear right here. But some people actually like the wear and tear look on the computer and thinks it adds character. I don't, but you do you. The rest of the body has held up pretty well. And after 122 battery cycles, the M2 MacBook Air still has 97% of its battery capacity left. And from my own personal experience, I've had Macs in the past at the year mark actually start to break down, whether this be USB-C ports being non-responsive, to webcams failing, to quick battery wear. And so far, I really haven't seen that with these M2 MacBook Airs. The laptop still functions like the day I bought it. I do treat it pretty delicately, but there has also been some times when it's accidentally fallen off of tables or bedsides because sometimes I use a USB-C port for charging and the robot vacuum in my house snag the USB-C cable pulling the laptop to the floor. So learn from my mistakes so it doesn't happen to you. While you can charge it through USB-C, you probably want to charge it through MagSafe as much as possible because MagSafe safely detaches once a certain amount of pressure is applied. I said earlier that the MacBook Air is really, really light. And while that is normally a really good thing, it can also be a negative, especially when the rubber feet on this laptop isn't all that great. So this laptop feels like it's on ice skates constantly. So charging through MagSafe would be my recommendation. And plus, that opens up your other two ports to be used for other things that you might want to plug into. If you use this M2 MacBook Air, or any laptop in general, you know how underwhelming the webcams can be. That's where this video's sponsor, the Opal C1, comes into play. The Opal C1 is a 4K webcam designed for Macs that has the approval of some of your favorite creators, like MKBHD, Sarah Dietschy, and Casey Neistat. This webcam has premium feeling aluminum all around the entire body. It's premium looking and was actually designed by Kenny Sweet, the guy who designed the first Beats by Dre and Pixel Watch. I like how minimal it looks with no giant logos or crazy colors. The image quality that comes out of the Opal C1 is fantastic. And when you compare it to the image quality out of the MacBooks, it just blows my MacBooks webcam out of the water. But the real game changer is in the software, the Opal Composer. The Opal Composer can be used in conjunction with the Opal C1 to really tweak and dial in the image you want out of the webcam for that perfect look, like white balance, how much background blur you want, or even adding in effects. The stellar image quality and customizability in this tiny premium feeling package makes it really hard for me to look at my Mac's built-in webcam the same as I did before without acknowledging that it's lacking all of these great features. So if you're interested in the Opal C1 or want to learn more about it, I'll leave a link in the video description box below. Anyway, let's talk about the rest of the MacBook. The M2 MacBook Air that I've been showing on this screen and tossing around here is the base model version with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. Now, these sound and look limiting on paper and the storage is half the speed of all the other storage sizes. Now, the target demographic who's buying this machine won't notice those differences, but it's worth noting the shortcomings of this laptop in case you do fall out of the typical user for this kind of laptop. Apple utilizes memory swapping on their Apple Silicon Macs, meaning once you fill up your eight gigabytes of RAM with those 32 Chrome tabs you have open, the laptop will begin treating your computer storage as extra RAM. The thing is, RAM is super fast, 
SSDs have been getting faster and they are way faster than just standard hard drives, but it's still slower than RAM. By having a slower SSD in the base model MacBook Air, you're more likely to experience slowdowns, especially if you're the type of person to have a ton of apps open or do some intensive tasks. Also, RAM is meant to be written to and wiped constantly. An SSD is not meant to be as frequent as RAM. Think of RAM like what you're remembering in the moment, your short-term memory. It's constantly changing versus your SSD, which is more like a core memory of your embarrassing first day of kindergarten. It's there, it's always been there, and it always will be. So this memory swapping does increase wear on the Mac's SSD. And Apple does not make it easy to replace and repair a dead SSD on their laptops, especially on their newer machines, unless you just so happen to double major in medical surgery and engineering. So if you have to make any upgrade to the M2 MacBook Air, or any base model MacBook with only 256 gigabytes of storage, go for the 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you need more storage, you can always just buy an external SSD and it's much cheaper than what Apple charges you for that storage upgrade. You might have the burden of carrying it around with you, but it can outlive your laptop and can also be used on your next laptop too. Okay, enough about the physical features and specs of the laptop. How is it like in everyday performance? Well, see, this thing hasn't really let me down yet. I find it really useful as a lightweight companion for general productivity, but I also end up using it kind of like a tablet too, like for watching YouTube videos, video streaming, or having reference materials up when I'm playing video games for when I can't figure out a puzzle that was designed for a 10 year old. I don't really use the M2 MacBook Air much to get my YouTube stuff done because I have dedicated desktop for that. But when I had to use it for those tasks, it's handled my video editing and photo editing just fine. I don't think my video workflow is super intensive. Just don't go expecting that you're gonna make the next hit blockbuster film on this laptop alone. Gaming on this thing, on another hand, I just wouldn't recommend at all. Not because it can't handle some really light gaming, it's just that supports for games for the M series Max, it's just not good. It's slowly getting better. Apple has been making some inroads on this, but don't expect to game on here unless it's using something like Remote Play or Steam Link. The M2 chip in this laptop does not heat up in basic tasks and general productivity, but it does get warm during charging or when I do something more graphically intensive like video editing. It's just the nature of things. This thing may be fanless, but it does get pretty warm. I don't think I've experienced a situation where this laptop was, was hot. Also, all these non-pro Macs only support one external monitor. You don't really notice it with this MacBook Air since it's kind of a on the go type of machine anyway. And I don't think I was ever in a situation where I personally wanted to plug in more than a single external monitor to this thing. But if you are, you might want to consider the MacBook Pro 14 inch instead. Now if that's too rich for your blood. There are these docks that can enable this through third party software, but that can be hit or miss and cost a decent chunk of change too. So if you're considering any Apple computer that doesn't have a Pro, Max or Ultra chip, be sure that you're okay with this one external monitor limitation or else you should look at those machines instead. So speaking of other MacBooks, what I have purchased this M2 MacBook Air with basically all the knowledge that I know now. A lot has happened in the last year since this 13 inch MacBook Air was released. Apple released a 15 inch MacBook Air, which is just this guy, but a little bit bigger. You know what I'm saying? Wider, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when doing that, they lowered the price of the 13 inch down to just $1,100. That put it at just $100 more than the last generation M1 MacBook Air and $200 less than the 15 inch MacBook Air. And before this recent price cut, I recommended the M1 MacBook Air because it's budget friendly, had some good enough performance and cost $200 less than the M2 MacBook Air. But now the M1 MacBook Air feels kind of ancient. That thing was released in late 2020 and it's still for sale. And the M2 is only a little more in terms of price for a bunch of nice little quality of life upgrades, like a newer design, the convenience and safety of MagSafe charging and a faster chip. These slightly improved features make using it a little nicer. And if you're using the laptop long-term, I think it's worth it to just pay up the hundred dollars to get the M2 MacBook Air, since this newer machine will have software updates for a little longer too. I don't think I could recommend purchasing the M1 MacBook Air new anymore, unless you find a really, really good deal for it. There have been some recently, but this M2 MacBook Air has served my own uses perfectly fine. And I'd recommend it for casual laptop users, focused on productivity, personal entertainment, and office type tasks. This machine doing all those things is pretty good. And even if you're a hobbyist that's getting into photo editing or video editing, this could still be a pretty good machine. There's rumors of a newer model in October. And if that's the case, 
this one will be on sale for an even better price. Or you could just wait to get the latest version instead. Anyway, what do you personally think? Are you considering buying this laptop with all the back to school deals and sales that are going on right now? Are you waiting for the M3 version instead? What other laptops are you looking at? Did this long-term review actually help you? Cause I'm not sure that I'm gonna keep doing these like one year reviews in the future unless they are actually pretty helpful. If they are, then maybe I'll keep doing them. Leave all that in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Bye.